Falco family, where homeschool is life and having a teachable spirit is our number one goal. So um, today I wanted to pop in and talk a little bit about, I get, I get these types of questions quite a lot and I thought maybe I'd just sit down and chit chat a little bit um, about using homeschooling materials as a resource and not curriculum. It's probably going to take me several videos to kind of unpack this the way that I want to. It's almost as if it would be a lot easier if you were just here with me and then we could just walk through some things and I can just stumble my way through showing you how I use them each day. Yesterday, it was such a good day and we skipped around using our different resources and I thought to myself like it would be really cool if I was able to show you guys how we moved from one resource to another and how um, pulling those things together is what creates our curriculum or a course of study. I just wanted to kind of show you what we did yesterday um, as an example of how I use our homeschool materials as resources instead of curriculum. So um, this is actually um, what I've planned so far um, for the start of the year, meaning not the school year, in the middle of the school year, but um, going back into homeschool after the break. Um, so these are my planning pages and this is what I have all planned out. Um, I went through these in detail on my live planning session with my patron fam. So um, if you're ever interested in something like that, that is where I do or I'm starting to do those types of things over on my patron page. Um, but these are basically my, my plans. Um, that is my unit mock-up and this is my first week's plan here. I basically plan the first week of the month very heavily and then I fill in the weeks that are to follow based on what we actually cover and how we move along in our homeschool days. So I wanted to show you kind of how we moved along. Um, when we started yesterday's school day uh, we made it to our unit study time and for our unit study what we're using as the spine of our study is the water and our world from the good and the beautiful it takes me a while to get through actual prepared curriculum because we don't use it from cover to cover and i really like it that way but i understand that it's very it can be kind of difficult to explain to others how we use it in that manner. I'm a fan of taking our time through curriculum and just um, I have no problems whatsoever redoing certain lessons over and over again because I feel like it's the best way to learn. So as you can see in our water and our world I have our chalk wall all set up for this unit um, and I am starting a little bit before and into lesson one. Um, as a part of the curriculum, there are vocabulary cards, which I then use um, a decent amount of the vocabulary to go on our chalk wall, which is where I generally, I typically cover a lot of our unit information. I love it because it sets a lot of the basic information that I want them to really grasp a hold of while we're going through the unit um, and that's just always kind of before their eyes so I really enjoy that part of our units and our days. Once we moved into our unit study portion of the day um, I opened up the spine and um, I know that the first thing I want to start covering is the water cycle but I want their minds to be able to grasp a hold of it so I don't want to move too quickly through things um, I look over it ahead of time so that I know what my general goal is I went over and if you go over to lesson one all about water the objective here is to help the children identify water throughout their world and specific properties of water um, to define vocabulary words like cohesive adhesive universal solvent capillary action and surface tension so i think it's amazing that working your way through the lessons in this curriculum will um lead to fulfilling that objective but I don't feel like you have to do it that way the whole goal is to reach your 
objective <laughs> you know what I mean so if I can find other ways to reach that objective then I am all for that um, so what I do is I basically know that this is what my goal is to get them to understand about water through our world and the specific properties and cover those vocabulary words um, since I know that one of the things in there is covering the water cycle um, when we moved on to science for the day, I just had the kids take out their science notebooks and sit in front of our chalk wall and copy the water cycle from the chalk wall into their notebooks. Um, I put on some music, I get out their markers and their highlighters and let them sit down to copy what is on the board. Now while they started doing that, um, I knew that one of the resources I maybe wanted to pull from would be... Um, everything you need to ace science in one big fat notebook i really like this resource you guys i knew that i wanted to pull this resource out um, and i knew that there was going to be something inside here that covered the water cycle so one of the things that i do that is kind of a big tip for me in using resources as opposed to curriculum when you have curriculum um you feel you feel a sense of um, accomplishment or success in completing levels and things because you work your way from the beginning, from the front to the back of the curriculum or the beginning to the end of the curriculum. That's the whole goal. It's a course of study. And so when we work our way through and then we, you know, then we assess how they did, um, you know, through tests and quizzes, that's how you generally get some type of understanding of, you know, working through bits of curriculum because I don't work from front to back like that um, or from cover to cover like that one of the challenges that I had in trying to make this a thing in our homeschool was that I often felt like I wasn't getting anywhere um, because there was no beginning and no end so one of the things that I started to do was use um, post-its um, now, eventually I put what we accomplished into my homeschool planner slash records. Um, and that will tell what we did for the year. But as far as using my resources, I needed a way to be able to visually tell um, that I was moving along. And for most people using curriculum, you open up whatever curriculum you're using and as you work your way through it you can visually tell because you can see you're halfway through it and that you're getting closer to the end um, but for me because I use them all out of order I wasn't able to see that so what I started doing was using post-its um, if there's a certain part of the resource that I'm covering I use a post-it there and then I put the date that we covered that bit of information there as well so I I'm able to visually see um, when I start I might have one post-it sticking out of things as I work my way through a specific resource it'll start to fill up with tons of post-its and dates on them that show when we covered them it's just another way to just kind of give me a little boost and let me know that I'm working my way through things and that we're using the resources that we've brought into our homeschool because I really just don't want to make a habit of you know, having a bunch of resources that you're never getting around to using. And that is so a thing in homeschool, for me at least it is. Once they started working on their water cycle, I knew there was something that would be in here um, for them to be able to, you know, for them to use as well. So we went on to, and I found it, the water cycle is in here on page 265. And it's all this information on precipitation and condensation, evaporation. Um, I really like this particular resource because you can read it like a book. The kids can read it like a book. There's all these highlighted spaces, which makes it really visually appealing for them as they read through the book. Um, and the little doodles and things, which helps them connect certain parts in their brains. Um, I really like these books and yeah, this is how we work our way through them. So I opened this up and I let them see that as well um, while they were copying the water cycle off of the board. And then I had Kendall come and read through this particular section. So that was how we used that. This is some of what they came up with. You know, my wrinkle in their pages. <laughs> 
So this is some of what they came up with. So I encourage them to copy what's on our board, of course, but then I like to see their doodles as well because it lets me know what's connecting in their brains. Cameron wanted to include a tsunami in his. He also decided to draw in heated water particles and um, regular water particles. He explained to me later that that was something that he learned on the Magic School Bus. So things like that really give me insight into how their brains are connecting any dots. And it really helps me in deciding how to move along um, in our days and our curriculum quote unquote the course of study that we're kind of building along the way so this is really really helpful um, to me to have them notebook and do this and just add a little bit of extra fun to it there are certain things that I instruct them to include. Like I wanted them to put water in our world at the top. So I give them a little bit of instruction, but then I'm not too um, strict on what they include after they've completed the things that I asked them to put on there. And that is for that very reason, because then I get to see what things stood out for them in their minds. After that, we were still working in our science time frame, so I went ahead and pulled out Ada Twist Big Project Book for Stellar Scientists, and what we decided to add to our notes was a little bit of the different types of science. I thought it would be a good um, way to squeeze that in so that we could really just start to uncover what are the different parts of studying science. So we wrote down the physical sciences and the biological sciences and went through what each one of them was, were. And then we identified which of the sciences we were actually working on. Um, so that was really helpful. And I felt like um, was a natural progression as far as um, how their questions were headed and things like that. Um, I think it's for us, it's really important to do that in homeschool because I feel like I keep their attention better and I keep their minds engaged more instead of um, just kind of forcing them along on the curriculum and having them complete those things and, and hoping that it sticks. I don't think that anything is wrong with that, um, but I just think I get a higher percentage rate of engagement. Does that make sense? Um, when I do it this way and let their curiosities and our curiosities together um, as a little learning team. <laughs> I just think it works better for us. Then the next activity we did um, inside of here was we began to make question trees. So um, it just says that scientists are curious. So it starts from one question and we start adding more questions to the tree. Um, and I thought that was a good way to lead back in to our spine which was all about water. So from that, before even starting some of the activities that are inside of our spine curriculum, I've already started connecting the dots. You know, well, they started connecting the dots. And then we started um, defining some of the vocabulary already as well. So we just have like a little starting space. And now we can move back into our spine. And then as the days move along and, um, and they have different questions or curiosities, then I can grab from another resource and we use those things as well. So that's why it takes quite a bit of time to work our way through um, the spine curriculum because I do give plenty of space to let our natural curiosities lead our homeschool days. But at the same time, I need to be able to keep track of what we're doing and feel somewhat accomplished. So using those post-its, um, using the post-it notes, adding the dates to it and keeping really good records of what we're accomplishing really, really helps. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, <laughs> I do want to talk more about it and show more examples of how it works out um, because I just feel like I know that I learned that way the best and I don't know I just I feel like this would have been really helpful to me to see what other people were doing and things that could possibly work for us and maybe things that maybe wouldn't work for us and that's fine too. Um, but 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I tried not to chit chat too long because I definitely have so many more things that I want to share with you. I'm getting ready to film um, what we are using for curriculum. I did not do that um, at the beginning of our school year. Um, so it's something that I wanted to show because I get quite a bit of questions about it. Um, I did not do new curriculum videos because a lot of the curriculum we're using are this is the same as what we were using before. We're just using it in a different way. But because I've gotten so many questions about it, I thought it might be beneficial to share what we're using based on each child. Um, so that is coming soon too. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Make sure that you are subscribed to our channel if you want to see more from us. Um, like this video, leave me comments in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!